How's everyone doing? My name is Mike Vini, and I'm a professional drummer. I like to hit stuff, and it makes me feel good. And just something you should know, uh, my friend Brendan Finnegan and I are going to be drumming with you today. We brought some drums, and we have a drum circle set up in the lobby by registration, so you can come and drum with us. And one of the reasons I do the drum circles, they're about the three B's, I call it. It's belonging, bonding, and believing. Everyone wants to feel like they belong, and when people belong, they bond. And once they bond, they start to believe in themselves and believe in others. I want to share a little bit about myself. I struggle with mental health challenges, and the best way to describe it is by describing the other thing I love besides music, food. Can I tell you about my kitchen? Picture a kitchen with a giant oven. I'm not talking a little tiny oven. I'm talking like a Viking oven in the center. And you've got four burners on the oven. On burner number one, there's a frying pan. And in that frying pan is my obsessive compulsive disorder simmering. You said something to me a few weeks ago, and it's stuck on my mind. In frying pan number two is my anxiety. I feel it in my chest as I'm up here right now. In frying pan number three is my anger. I'm getting angry. And right here is a stock pot. And I take the ingredients from each frying pan, put it into the stock pot, close the lid. That thing's about to boil over. <laughs> and that's me. That's what I struggle with. And in my kitchen, even though the pot's about to boil over, I can't get out of it. I'm stuck in it forever. And there are mirrors everywhere. Everywhere I look, I can see myself, kind of like in this room. Everywhere I look, I can see myself. Because <laughs> everything is about me, and everything's distorted. I'm in this kitchen right now. And it makes it really difficult for me to deal with people, to have relationships, and it's really caused a lot of behavior challenges in my life. So for my entire life, I've struggled with mental health challenges. Just a few things about me. I was hospitalized for it three times as a kid. I was expelled from school because of my behavior. I was suicidal, and I was always on medication. And now, the only medication I'm on are those drums that are right out there. And it's the only medication you can share with other people, by the way, okay? <laughs> Shouldn't do that with your medication. Today I want to talk to you about stigma. And stigma affects me and anyone who struggles with challenges. And I want to give you a picture of stigma. Stigma is when people look at you funny, they make judgments about you, or they discriminate against you because you're different. That's all stigma is. And I experience it all the time. People look at me funny. Sometimes people don't want to hang out with me because they're not sure what to think of me and if I'm unstable or something like that. And so what I've learned are three ways to transform this thing called stigma into a strength. Because I realized that stigma starts with us in this room. It's not something that's out there in the world. It starts with us in this room. So here are three ways. The three ways are, number one, to take care of yourself. Number two, to keep the subject of disabilities in everyday conversation. And number three, look for teachable moments. Let me go through each point. Number one, take care of yourself. It's important to take care of yourself because when you feel good about yourself, you can influence other people. Okay? Anais Nin, the author, said that we don't see things as they are, we see things as we are. So when you take care of yourself and feel good about yourself, that transcends to other people, okay? So it's really, really important, really important to do that. Each one of us has different ways of taking care of themselves. For me, I need to get sun each day. When I get my vitamin D, I feel happy. I've been in this hotel all day. I'm gonna step out at some point to get some sun. Uh, music, for me, is a big thing that's really good for me. But each person has a unique thing that they can do to take care of themselves. So I encourage all of you sitting in this room to find three things in your life that you can do in the next week to take care of yourself. Number two, keep the subject of disabilities in the conversation. Now, let me switch subjects for a second. 
Let me go to a different subject. Your CEO brought up civil rights movement before, and I'm going to go with what he said. We are in the middle of a civil rights movement. But if we look at another civil rights movement, the one with race here in America, we can draw some parallels to our civil rights movement with people with disabilities. Okay? If you look at me, what do you see? Do you see a bald man on stage? Do you see a bald African American man on stage? Maybe you see one of those, maybe you see both, maybe you see something else. But let's just say for a moment you see a bald African American man on stage. African American is a term that's okay to use nowadays. It's politically correct. Years ago, there were some words that you could have used to describe people of my race that weren't. And we have this constant conversation here in America about labels. And we're doing the same thing with people with disabilities. However, it didn't start with discussing labels. The civil rights movement did not start with discussing labels. It started with a conversation. And the conversation has to happen not just in these walls. It has to happen out there in everyday conversation. Everyone understand that? And I always say that education starts with a conversation. So think about ways in your everyday life that you can keep the subject of disabilities in the conversation. The third thing I want to share with you is to look for teachable moments. All of us have different challenges. And one of the greatest things we can do to overcome our challenges is to help someone else with a challenge. There's someone who's got a similar story to you that you can help. And I want you all to think about that. So number one, take care of yourself. Number two, keep the subject of disabilities in the conversation. And number three, look for teachable moments. I want to share a story about a woman that you all know. Her name was Rosa Parks. And Rosa Parks was famous for refusing to give up her bus seat and go to the back of the bus because the rules at the time said that all blacks in America had to sit in the back of the bus. Am I correct? Yes. Now, something you should know about Rosa. Prior to Rosa boycotting her bus seat, there were several other blacks that got arrested, but we never hear about them. So why is it that we know about Rosa Parks, but not the people who became, came before her and got arrested? Well, I found out. When Rosa got arrested, she was friends with everybody in Birmingham, Alabama. And she was known as a person who always took care of herself. She always kept things in the conversation, and she always looked for teachable moments. And the story gets better. She got one of the best lawyers in Birmingham, Alabama. And they decided that they were going to have a meeting at this church. So the lawyer calls up this church and says to the guy, look, we need to have a meeting to discuss a boycott. And the church guy says, we can't do it. And the lawyer got frustrated, started getting real lawyer with him, and said, no, we need to have this meeting. This is serious. The guy on the other end of the phone says, no. And finally he says, listen, Dr. Martin Luther King, whether or not you like it, we're coming. So I'd like to ask you all a favor. As we move forward in designing the future, I need you to keep these three things in mind. Can you repeat after me? Can you say, I will take care of myself? I will take care of myself. I will keep the subject of disabilities in the conversation. I will keep the subject of disabilities in the conversation. I will look for teachable moments. I will look for teachable moments. My name is Mike Vini. Thank you for being a wonderful audience.